Well, let's think about today. You know, today on Sport Fishing on the Fly, we're going to do a little bit of the big water stuff. I'm with Dwayne D'Andrea, a good friend, part of uh, his little fly company, whatever you call it. What do you call Mountain it? Valley Sport there Fishing. There you go, Mountain Valley Sport Fishing. On the Columbia River, you know, home waters, but again, it's really big water. We always talk about big water as being tough to fish, but today, we're going to try to show you how to fish this big water. That's today, as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. Hardy and Gray's Fly Fishing Rods, Born to Fish. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, Go Fish BC. That's the beauty of this big water, you know, it doesn't matter where you're fishing, we're fishing the back eddies, we're fishing the main stem, we're fishing these seams, and we're going to show you that through the show. It's amazing all the different types of water you can fish in, in big systems like this. It's amazing. You know, we'll be out in 50, 100 feet of water and there'll be fish porpoising everywhere. It's crazy. So now that's the one, eh? Add a little gig. Yeah, it's the one? Yeah, it's the one. This is your proven one? This could be a candidate for the bench after? What do you call this? Oh, for guy? sure. Well, that's an Antron caddis. A brown Antron caddis. What makes it so special? Well, I think it has a little bit of sheen to it that makes it uh, Makes it a little special. Well, you call it the carpet fly, right? Yeah, because Antron. Antron is pretty much carpet material. <laughs> Looks just like so carpet. It, so. uh, it seems to, it's easy to tie, yeah. it's durable, and uh, the fish seem to like it. It's pretty consistent. Well, we have yet to prove that, but you know what? If the fish do like it, it could be a good candidate for the bench. Obviously. Absolutely. Nice. I think you Looks like good. It. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really good. I think you like it. Excellent. There you're on. Never it. taking all There you go. There. Get ready. <laughs> there you go. There, I got it. Oh. It's a fly. Huh? It's a fly, man. He ate it. I know he did. He ate it. Yes, I tell you. <laughs> he didn't totally eat it no, though. No, no, he kind of. Kind of came up and slurped at it. Soft. I think he wanted to suck her down a bit. Well, that's uh, that's nice to know. You already proved the fly. You know, first cast with the fly, we had one rising fish. Guy tried to eat it, so that's a good sign. Yep. I like it. Yep. And really size dependent. We're going to go through that a little bit again later on the show. How dependent the size is out here. Big water, you get so many different varying hatches. You get mayflies, caddis, uh, we got hex hatches, which are a very big mayfly. We got green drakes. You got a whole assortment, and whatever they're keying on is all dependent on size. Not so much color, but it's very dependent on size. So we'll, uh, we'll go through that a little bit, and we'll try to show you a few of the naturals on the water a little bit later. But we got some fish to catch here. Ooh, this guy's pretty good. That's a nice size fish. Look at that. Oh, she's that a Danny. 20, I would say 23. Yeah, that's a Danny. Look at Love it flashing measure. down there. That's a beauty. That's a big fish in the slack water. In like the slack that. water. And that's a neat thing I can explain is fishing that slacker water, the fly was sitting in the slacker water moving in to where the foam was in that riffle line. And that's what you got to have. You, if you cast the end of the foam line, there's so much other food there, the fish doesn't really see it. But if you cast in the calm and let it filter in to that seam line, the fish sees it and eats it, and this big guy ate it. Oh, he's yeah, pretty oh. good size, eh, Dwayne? He's a really nice fish, and now he's real. Nice. I'm gonna try to keep his head up now that I got him. Oh, 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 you got him? Yeah. Oh, there's a fly just sitting right and then his bottom lip. I'm just gonna pop that out. There he is, there. That was out for a rainbow. How long is that long guy? Gone. Pretty long, it's, eh? It is. That's a big fish. 20. I'd say 23. Yeah, 24. 23. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beauty? I oh, don't worry about measuring them. I'm gonna get back in and get a drink. Look at the back on them. Look at how beautiful these fish are. Look at the look at the.
colors. They're green, they got the deep black spots. That's just a beautiful fish. Pointer in the current here. Congratulations. That's a nice fish. Good Wasn't job. that good? So what do you figure? That was probably, I don't know, 20, 23-ish. Oh yeah, for sure. It's well inches. over 20. And that's what you're going to expect out here. Again, you got to remember, big water, big fish. And we that's set right. it all on. But yeah. the nice thing is, a traditional rule is big water, big fish, big fly. But now over here, when you're fishing the dry fly, it's all a nice little, what are we going to call that? The carpet fly? The carpet caddis? Sure. There we go. The carpet, carpet caddis. caddis. Sounds good. So you know what we're going to do? Let's go to the bench right now and tie up the carpet caddis. This week on the bench, I'm going to tie you up the brown carpet caddis. We named it the carpet caddis because the xenon or antron we use to tie the fly is what they make carpet from. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a 2X fine size 14 dry, some ADOT olive dun thread to tie with, some olive brown xenon for the tail, some olive brown antron dubbing for the body, some olive brown xenon again for the wing, and a tiny brown hackle for the hackle. To start the fly off, I've tied my thread in and gone to the bend on the hook. I'm going to take a little bit of my, my xenon. And again, I only want this a fairly short little tail on it, probably a quarter of an inch long, and then we're just going to tie it in. The next step in the fly is very important. You want this body to be quite thin. So what I'm going to do is take some olive brown antron, and I'm going to dub it onto my thread. And I just want a very fine amount of dubbing on this thread. And then we're going to wrap it forward. And as we wrap it forward on the hook, we're going to go over it with our thread. And this will keep packing that dubbing down and make the body look very thin. Now it's very important when you're tying in the wing to actually build it up. And how we're going to do this is take one clump of Zelon and tie it in. And don't worry about the length at this point. Just tie in one clump. And then take another piece and tie it in. And by the time we're finished, we'll have three pieces of Zelon built around to form the wing. So one on one edge, one kind of up the middle of the fly, and one on the other edge. Once we have the three clumps of Zelon tied in for the wing, we're going to trim it to the right size. And again, I usually pull it back just so it's about to the back of the body. So not much further, not the length of the tail, just to the back of the body. And cut off your Zelon there. Another key to this fly is keeping your legs or the hackle very small. I only take two wraps and I want to keep it really small. So what I mean by small is select a hackle that is half the size of, of what the hook shank is. It should be very, very small. You only want a couple of little feet or a couple of little legs right off the front of this fly. So I'm only taking two turns with my hackle and that's it, then tying off. I'm just going to whip finish off the head, finish up that fly, and cut off your thread. Now the big thing to remember about this brown carpet caddis is small. You want a nice thin body, a small little tail, and especially the hackle. Only one or two wraps of hackle, and that's it. So why don't you explain a little bit about the big water, and you know, how we're going to approach it. Well, the Columbia River is big water, obviously, yeah. and what I like to do when I come out here with clients or with myself or a friend is drift down the river, and drifting the river, you break it into back eddies. Okay. So you find an eddy, you start fishing an eddy. And now back eddies, what do you mean eddies, back eddy is a back flow? Yeah, it's a back flow where the current comes upstream. Okay, opposite of the normal flow of the river, That's right? That's right. Okay. So once you're in a back eddy, what you want to do then is break your back eddy down into seams or, convey, or um, feeding lanes. Right. And you can see those feeding lanes by the seams where the foam line runs or a piece of wood that floats down. Yeah, what and do you call the, the conveyor belt? Conveyor you belt, a conveyor belt. Basically a conveyor belt of food yeah. where the food gets trapped and the fish like to go. Okay, and that's where now, there's a good example here. We've got the nice flowing water where you've got really no bubbles, no foam. It's all right. that glassy kind yeah, of kind water. Of weird looking. But where the glass goes into that foam line, that riffle line, is where all the buildup is. You get the foam, you get the bugs. Like you say, you can see wood in there sometimes. That's where the food is, so that's, that's right. where you have to key. But what I like to do, and I'm going to show you right now, is I like to cast into the calm 
and allow that fly to, to float into the yeah, foam. Yeah, that's a great technique. You find that's good? That's a great So technique. what other ones you're talking about? So that's one way, approaching those seam lines. What about the yeah. big flow? What about the main water? Well, the main flow, then again, you got to break it down to a seam. You'll see one main seam and you target. Don't move, don't get off that seam. Pick okay. one and, and stay with and it. stay with it. Yeah. Because the fish tend to follow those around. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a really good example of what we mean by the calm water. And the calm water is right here in front of me. You can see by my rod tip, I'm going to point to the calm water, which is right down here. You can see where my line is right in front of you. That's really calm water. Just a little bit further past that is the foam line. So what I'm going to do is cast the fly into this calm and let it mesh. See how it floated in the calm and it's going to come right into the foam line. So it's actually floating down the foam. You can see by the end of my line. You can't see the fly, but it's actually floating from the calm into that foam line. And again, just keep working the calm line into that foam and allow that fly to float from the calm water into that foam line. There's a great one. Look at that. He's oh, he's still on. Whoa, look at him go. Oh, another, nice oh, another dandy. Man, oh man. This is just crazy. Look at that guy slashing. It's another beauty. Oh, look at this guy. Another gorgeous 20 inch plus fish. Oh, oh man. Are you going to give up easy on us, no? Oh, no. No, now he's deep six and he's, he's not happy. Only problem is I didn't get him on the reel. He came running at me and I had to grab the line. So here's another tip. When you're reeling up and you can't pick it on flying up, get the fly in between your fingers and just start stripping. Strip it back as hard as you can. Because that's the only way you're going to pick it up. And another one, what I'm doing now is picking up my line. I'm keeping tension on with this finger and I'm reeling up with the other. And I'm letting, well, every, t every time he pulls, I just let a little more off my finger or I keep the tension on him. And that way you can get on your reel in a hurry. Oh man, this is another dandy, Dwayne. Yes. Nothing but big fish out here. And I've always said it, this is a world-class fishery. I mean, the whole show is about big water, but if you want one of the best big water experiences, give Dwayne a call. Mountain Valley Sport Fishing will take you out on the Columbia here. Unbelievable. And actually, you got some other tasty treats around here, too, don't you? Oh, some other good spots to go. You know, oh, we got the sure. Slocan River now. We got a few other nice spots. Yeah, we got to a go. walking wade. The Salmo is a good river. Yeah, Salmo. And that's all because of great management. You know, we've had just very good fisheries management over the past five, six years, and it's helped. It's helped us a ton. You know, the gang at Go Fish BC, Brian Chan and his crew, done a great job of getting everybody out fishing again, really conserving our waters, protecting things. So, hats off to them. Oh, this is, this is a big fish, Dwayne. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, look at this guy. Gorgeous. I see a different color compared to the yeah. last one. Oh. Can't say enough about it. Big water, big fish. It's that easy. It's that, it's that easy. <laughs> but it's not, a, it is a technical river. Yeah, like a lot of people come here and say, well, I'll go there and fish it and I'll do my own thing. Yeah, you know, you're going to get stoned. You got to have the good patterns. It's technical, isn't it? It is. It's a tough fishery for sure in that respect. So obviously yeah. favoring the, you know, the intermediate and advanced fishermen. I mean, being a, beginners can come out here too, but... Well, there's lots of spots for them. Yeah. You just got to take, you got to just pay your money, take your chances, as yeah. we always say. Look at that guy. Oh, another dandy. This is another toad. My God. Okay, I'm going to give you that, Dwayne. Yep. Invaluable tool, forceps. You know, when these big fish, they eat it, and they eat it good, keep it upside down, and... Forceps are the best thing. You can just get down and just get in there and get that fly, which is right there. And there it is, just comes out like nothing. Now hold this guy up. Another gorgeous rainbow, big fish. Oh, and this guy looks like he just came off the spawn. Look at how long he is. That fish will put on minimum two, two pounds over the summer, maybe even three. Look at that, nice and long. Just coming off the spawn, he's probably 20, 23, maybe even 24 inches long. That guy will put on how many pounds you figure? Two or three? Oh, two or three. Yeah, Easy. by the end of the Easy. summer, because he's just up here and he's feeding steadily. They're fattening up for winter. They are. And they just get huge. Like some fish out here, I got one I was telling Dwayne, I got one the other night about 27 inches long last night. And I, it had to be no more than four pounds. That fish will probably be close to seven, eight pounds by the yeah. end of the summer. Yeah, it won't take long. Yeah. A few weeks of heavy caddis. And they just bulk right up. It's yeah. amazing. That's why this fishery is so phenomenal. 
Well, let's try and see if we can get another one here. It's starting to come up. Oh, well, yeah. 220. 220 in the afternoon. It's a beautiful day, too. It's not too hot. You know, it's been up over 30 every day that we've been out. And yeah, it's, it's nice to get a, a day in only the high 20s. Look at this. Isn't this what guiding is all about? You know what? I don't even get abused from my brother Dale all the time that I have to row. I mean, one of the guide and I got to wow. row. Can't it's take amazing. it. It's just like, it must be my guiding prowess or something. I'm just, now I'm going to have to catch some fish. Guide me into some fish. Okay, I'll guide you into some fish. It's unbelievable what I do. Yeah. <laughs> is that deeper? Isn't that the best? Pull you over in the slack of the water here. The thing with the big water too is you got to be able to to pick up line in a hurry. Large arbor reel, oh, nice jump. Large arbor reels, again, invaluable out here because once they get in the current, they'll scream down, take out a bunch of line, they'll get in the back inning and come screaming back at you. So you gotta pick up line in a hurry. And Dwayne doing a pretty wow. good job. It feels good to catch again, fish once in a you're while. You're kind of spoiled getting that Islander reel, eh? Yeah, you don't get to fish much when you're guiding. <laughs> it's a nice treat. Look at them dance. Beautiful colors. Oh, there you go. Thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. For doing the deed, the yep. guide. I'll let you do the honors here. Get the rod out of the way. Real little fella. There you go. That fly killer. The carpet caddis is a winner. This seems to be working. Oh, it's, just, it's a great pattern. Oh, yeah. So you know how big is that guy? 17? Yeah. We're nice and fat, nice and yeah. healthy and everything else. Yeah, they're... Well, you know, the beauty of this is we have the whole day to drift. Now, the nice part is, it, as we mentioned before, we can drift. What middle, what drift are we doing? What, what stretch is this that we're doing? Well, I call it the uh, top stretch. Top stretch, okay. And it's from the Waterloo Eddy all the way down to Janelle, right? Yeah. Okay, which is a real okay. nice stretch of water. So what we're gonna do next week, we're gonna come back and we're gonna show you the rest of the drift. We're probably gonna fish this eddy for another couple hours, usually to what time? Well, I'll give it to six o'clock. Six o'clock, and then we'll head down and do the drift. Yeah, use that side to get shady on the okay. other side. And we'll, and we'll fish down. until about 9, 9.30. Yeah. But that's when the big boys come out yeah, to that's, play. Yeah, that's when it gets exciting. But I it know. gets hard to see. That's oh, my well. problem. Hey, it's part of the challenge so, is the yeah, fishing. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit of time while I'm do, you know, on the oars. It's a nice thing to mention to everybody about big water and safety. As you can notice, me and Dwayne are both wearing these Mustang survival vests. Now, very important out here in the big water. They've got two different styles. They offer the auto inflate, whereas if you actually get in and outside the water and you happen to hit your head, you fall in the water. If you go down about two or three inches, even maybe even four inches, it'll auto inflate. It's got a sensor on it that will trigger it and inflate it for you. Another one is the manual version, which I'm wearing, where it's got the small tab and you just have to pull it to inflate. They're all CO2 cartridges that fill them up. So whenever you hit in big water or even big lakes, if you ever fall out of the water, you need these vests on. Again, for safety, save your life because you'll never get to shore if you don't have one of these on. Another good tip too is if you come to this big water, get a guide. You know, guides understand this stuff. They're there for your protection. They're not gonna take you somewhere that's not safe. So you know what? It's a good idea. Get a guide and always wear safety equipment. That is a beauty. Man, he's Isn't hot. It? He's, he's hot. a hot fish. He just took a oh, big, oh, oh, big jump out there again. This is a nice fish. Fired up. Oh, man. Coming right at you. Yeah, he is, but then, he, then they go on the current, right? You gotta be so careful out here. You gotta pick up line in a hurry, and then you gotta let them go when they go. So you gotta be really good on the reel, mm -hmm. and you gotta really, and best thing I tell people, keep the rod tip in the air. Utilize the rod to take care of the action, because if you don't, you're gonna break them off. As soon as you straighten your line, as soon as you straighten your rod, you give the fish all that free line and space, and you're gonna break them off. He's just gonna go or he's gonna shake it loose. So keep the rod tip high and let the rod do all the work. That's a big key, because this is a big fish. Now, oh, man. Hey, well, how big do you think this guy is? Another one over 20. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there he goes again. Look at him. He's like a salmon. Yeah, he's like a salmon That's out three there. times. He's, look at him. Look at him tail walking. <laughs> oh, awful. no. Oh, wow. Oh, like awesome. a salmon, eh? Run at the boat. Look at that. Yeah. There's sharking. Sharking out wow. there. Look at him glowing out there. That's fantastic. Look at him he's coming right at the boat. Look at that, another big fish, and he's thick. <laughs> he's fat. He's being feeding. He's uh, you know, he's looking to me 20, oh, yeah. 20, 22, uh, healthy. 
Oh, look at him down there. Isn't that great with the with the Maui gym glasses? Oh, beautiful. And you caught just, it fairly close to the boat. That's caught him right by the boat. Again, I let it. I let the fly go in the calm, pick up in the current, and he just ate it. I saw him following it. It was great. Man, there he is. There. I think he might be ready. I don't know. He's pretty, pretty strong fish. Yeah. You see two or three times they come up. And if Run, they ever do get go. tired. That's what I call hip hugging. Just put the, instead of using your wrist all the time, yeah. put the rod on your hip and again, point this straight up. Don't allow the line to go straight at all, the rod tip. Because once you do that, you give the fly all the advantage. Mm -hmm. Keep the rod tip, keep the angle of the fly so he stays, remains hooked up. Because if you, you know, we're using barbless for everything and as soon as you give him any leeway, he's gone. Look at it, it's just in the corner of his lip too, the fly. Like he's just caught there. Look at that, just barely hooked. Wow. What a and he's just barely him. hooked. Look at this. I want to show everybody just, just in the corner of the left. Look at, look at how he's hooked. I mean, there he is, right there, right on the, right on the edge of the left. I'm just going to get that out. And again, small hooks, size 16 and 14 hooks. They don't have to be big. Oh man, you know what? He's not that big, but look at the girth on him. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? How fat? Oh, he wants to go. I like that. I don't I ever put pressure on him. Again, don't grip the fish hard there. If he wants to go. Just flick him, just let him go. So here he is there. Just yeah, I'll slide that in there. Look at that. What a gorgeous fish. Look at him sitting in the water like that. Look at the colors. And don't let the fish go before he's revived. You know, he'll want to swim away. As soon as he wants to go, let him go. Oh, another good one. Excellent. Good well, you know what we're going to do now is the beauty is this is a, you know, a two day show. Essentially, we, we got the rest of the float to do. So I think next week we'll, we'll continue on our journey. And what are we, where are we starting right now? Where is this float? Well, it's called the upper section. Upper section, right. okay. There's actually another put in above us. This is, but still I call it the upper okay. section. Because there's not, there's a whole bunch of fishing above us and a lot below us. So yeah. we'll do the upper uh, section, which is called, and we'll just drift down and pull out tonight, probably around 9.30 downstream. Beautiful. Now, when, when you come out here though, make sure you give Dwayne a call. Uh, your guiding service? Yeah, it's Mountain, a Mountain Valley. Valley Sports yep. Fishing. And you can get a hold of me on the World Wide Web at KootenyFlyFishing.com. Perfect. KootenyFlyFishing.com. Make sure you give them a call because, again, we can't stress the fact enough. It's big water. you got to be careful out here. As I always say in the extras, take care. Conserve all waters. You know, fish like that, you can't. You know, they got to go back. They're a beautiful fish. We'll see you next time and actually next week when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Fantastic, eh? A beautiful fish. Want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.